I think I think it's working. Oh, it is working. Hey, Mark Sargent. That's, that's impressive considering YouTube <laughs> was down entirely for an hour yesterday. I know. The YouTube apocalypse. We'll get to that. But hello to all who are here, old friends and new. I'm Patricia Steer, and that's Mark Sargent. This is The Secret Show, which is an only Wednesday thing where Mark and I get together. It's not an interview show. It's not super serious. It's two friends casually discussing flat earth with others. And you in the chat are friends and kind of like family too, flat earth family. Um, as hokey as that may sound. Uh, this is episode number 254 of The Secret Show. And we're going to have Karen B on in a couple of moments. She did something with the BBC very recently that I want to talk to her about. She'll just pop in in a couple of minutes. And she's going to let us know what it's like to do one of those interviews. I know you've done an interview, uh, a UK interview before. Done several, yes. Yeah. Do, but we're going to dodge the elephant in the room, are we? Really? The elephant in the room. Uh, the um, big elephant with the giant CBS stenciled on the side of it. Which... Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's everybody who happened to be at the Flat Earth Meetup in California over the summer that Netta Hagler put on and Arcadia. many attended. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, um, I got pulled over by, pulled over, sounds like a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Pull, you pull flat the, over? Pull, the side. pull over, lady. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I got pulled away from the meetup for about an hour or so and missed most of it, seemed to me anyway, sitting okay. on a picnic table talking to a guy who asked me many questions, I think 20 specific questions, and then on and on with other sorts of questions. He right. used only a couple of the questions, but it was put together on CBS Sunday morning with Jane Pauley. And also other flat earthers comments were put in there. Also, yeah. um, D Marble was in it. D Marble was in it. And Netta, as I mentioned earlier, right. and um, a bunch of other people. M were Mad Mike too. was in the back half of it. Yes, Mad Mike was in it. We, we need to talk about him too. Yeah. We'll do that after we talk with Karen. Anyway, it aired and- um, We didn't think it was gonna air. I thought that CBS scrapped it because it was so long ago that it was filmed that I thought, you know, I think they just didn't yeah. feel flat earth was an important issue. It was, it was, but it wasn't compared to other news stories that were out there. Uh, you know, ABC took a while for them. They took them like four or five months before they released the conference footage from last year. How can any of these major media outlets take a really long time to produce something with hokey, ridiculous, typical music and a mindset of those flat earthers are crazy. It's paint by numbers. They could put that baby together in like a half hour. It is, but a lot of it's just the backlog. They There's no research. They don't do any research. The media treats stories like I do thumbnails. A lot of people don't know that I collect thumbnails months in advance. I'll, I'll just go start going through the internet, just grabbing images as fast as I can. And some of them will sit there for weeks, if not months, like the one I just re released for this last Strange World episode, yes. that had been sitting in my folder for four months, literally four months. And they finally, it's like, hey, let's put this out. And sometimes producers talk to each other and you know they release it, they, they try to be strategic. Like for example, the CBS piece comes, it came out this last, you know, just last Sunday, but the other group that was at the very same meetup, National Geographic. Dun, dun, dun. dun not dun, looking dun, forward dun. to when that comes out, everyone. <laughs> Which is going to be even a bigger piece. <laughs> it might even of course. be. It might even be. By the way, the CBS, I, I, I've got to tell you, kudos. You did a fantastic job in the interview. Everybody thought so. I haven't seen a single comment said, oh, Patricia just sucked. Nobody said that about, the, about your interview. You were stellar. You were focused. You were Thank passionate. You. you were clear. You were concise. It was fantastic. And it is no small feat. Uh, don't forget that this was also the 40th anniversary episode of that show, which I didn't even know. I, uh, big, it was kind of a big deal. And we were showcased. The whole thing, the, the opening set was based off the whole flat earth concept. Yes, yeah, several globes. And then Jane Polly standing there in the background. Uh, it looked vaguely 1970s. It had right. a retro vibe to it. I don't know if anybody else noticed that. I put the, uh, the video in the description box so you can right. go watch it yourself if you haven't already seen it but and yeah. yeah they built yeah. that set for flat earthers isn't they that did cool? they did and look jane jane polly's no slouch i mean she is top top of her game journalism so uh, that was fantastic uh the national geographic thing 
again, look at the timing there. They both shot their segments at the exact same meetup. Where, where it, was, it was weird because they had to shoot around each other. So while they were showing the camera angles of you and Netta and, and other people, National Geographic was doing the same thing. And they had to shoot, but they had to make sure they didn't shoot the other team. So and that, you couldn't be shot by CBS. No, no, I could not. That was National the, Geographic. That was the deal that uh, National Geographic had dibs on me. So I was like, okay. And so uh, CBS, you know, they had to settle for you because you know you're just, you know. Uh, you down a bit. So no, no, it was awesome. I was so with me? so happy without me. <laughs> with, <laughs> with me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it was kind of no, it no, it was great. I mean, that was a really pivotal weekend for Flat Earth anyway, for all for all sorts of different reasons. Uh, but the National Geographic piece is going to come out here probably. They're going to try to time it just before the conference. Uh, so, and I talked to the member Justin, who yes, we had bre do. breakfast with. A, a nice guy, actually. Nice guy. I hope he doesn't do us as dirty as I think he will. Uh, yeah, well, it's not his decision, and honestly, he's 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 not even with them anymore. Millennials. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I, Why? Feel, I don't know. Well, did he I, say, I but you know, the salt and sea thing, they did other experiments after the one that you guys were at and they all showed that there was no curvature. And they said to him, you're fired. <laughs> Is that what happened? <laughs> I don't, I, if, I wish he if, wish he would have said more. Uh, he's no longer there. I uh, we uh, and our one of our, uh, our our inside friends at EBC. He is now with CBS. Uh, it's going to turn into music. Chairs. Yeah, we'll see where Justin ends up. I hope it's something good. But the piece is going to come out absolutely. And in fact, the CBS piece will prompt National Geographic's like, okay, you know, they're going to look at it and say, all right, let's make sure we we hit all the the different notes that they didn't and beat them. So I I think it's going to be. I well, I'm hoping it's a thirty minute piece. I'm hoping. Are you? I mean, I know you're not worried because flat Earth marches on regardless of what mainstream throws at us. Sure. We don't. We're not basking in the limelight of mainstream. We're using mainstream because we know what they do. We know right. what they are. But right. it's just another way that people out there, random people who never heard about Flat Earth, will hear the words Flat Earth and just might research it, regardless of how dumb they say we are. Perfect. If we're so dumb. Why would they be doing a story on us? Perfect example. Um, and we didn't even have to, have to tell him my brother-in-law, who you met, mm -hmm. uh, he was watching CBS Sunday morning. <laughs> Literally had it up, uh, you know, sitting there with his morning coffee and his bagel and, you know, watching, watching it. And he's like, hey, Did hey, man. I know her when you saw him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he, he was like, hey, hey, man, something's on. Something's like, you got to see this, right? And then, um, <laughs> And and yeah, so you come up on screen, and my sister is like, "Oh, her again!" Oh, <laughs> <It's> no, <like, laughs> and she walks off. She just well, can't. your sister just doesn't want to have anything to do with no. alternative modes of thinking. It's not a particular prejudice against me. No, but he he was totally engaged. The, the point was, we didn't have to tell him. He just he was. That's a show he watches, and it's an older demographic, I think. Uh, but it was it was great. I was I was really happy that uh, it got out there, and it's it is not going to hurt us in the slightest. Mm, mm. Well, mostly because of you. I mean, you you did phenomenally. There was not a single waiver. That's what he was looking for. I'm, I think they were probably out of the hour they shot. You probably didn't waver once. But, but he they, asked me twenty questions. He only put a couple in there, and I. You know, I knew that I wouldn't be able to completely go into augmented reality and right. contact lenses and eyes and objects that aren't there on the ISS that they put in later. Too confusing for the average person to to grasp in something like, you know, a quick show where people are halfway distracted when they're watching anyway. Right. So I just answered as very as concisely as I could, but try to jam in a little extra information. But with everything I said, they answered me with a CGI picture. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they did, and 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 some interesting music. They were, oh yeah, how quickly, how many times we're going to hear a version, their own studio version of the X Files? Exactly, it it's it's all taken from the X Files series from the from the was late eighties to mid nineties, mm -hmm. uh, and then the movie spooky music, spooky or, music, or clown car music. They media loves using that too when they show right. us. So right, but it, like you pointed out, they didn't attack flat earth directly they deferred it to the scientists in this case oh we've got to mention this guy 
He uh, wasn't Mr. a scientist. He was a Jeopardy winner. He, yeah, I, won, a- <laughs> I won Jeopardy five times in the mid 90s. Oh, yeah. It's so like, he what? can memorize and regurgitate. Bravo, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah, no, no. It was his comments about the general philosophy of questioning science, which I thought was very, very telling, where he was, you know, where they said, you know, shouldn't be, shouldn't science be more democratic? And he's like, no. No, it shouldn't. <laughs> He's like, you know, and that's something that Neil deGrasse Tyson would also say, which is no. He was basically saying the lab coats have the authority. Do not question us. When we rubber stamp something, that's it. It's an absolute fact. Science rules with an iron fist. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. Once a nerd, always a nerd. It's always going to be that way. And I'm speaking from someone who considers himself to at least be half nerd. I mean, you know, I bet you would have done really well in Jeopardy because you know a lot of information that you've memorized over the years just because you absorb a lot of media, you absorb a lot of info, but that doesn't make you intelligent. It's what you do with the information, right. how you can critically dissect it and then put it into public, I mean, not public, put it into a practical use that makes you intelligent. I couldn't do that show because Alec Trebek bugs me. Oh, well, you know, that's a good reason. Because, well, because he's absorbed so many of the answers. Remember, he's reading off the freaking teacher's edition. So he comes off as smug and he's gotten more smug as each year. It's like, <laughs> you didn't know that complex equation? <laughs> Who are you? It's like, what? Yeah, you just want to lunge across the stage and grab an electrical cord and strangle him. Well, maybe you might, but... <laughs> um, we're waiting for Karen B to join us, but maybe there's an issue. Let me check. Okay. Um, I mentioned she should come in now, so she will come in when she comes in, but maybe not. Karen, if you're in the line, I know we're waiting for her. I should, maybe we should play Jeopardy music while we're waiting for Karen. Well, no, no, I should show, I should show, I got things in the mail, mail, letters, we get letters. letters. I mean, books, you've got books. I do. I get books. So, uh, the first, let's just start with the smallest first. I got a postcard, uh, from Vermont. That squinting shows me you need to get glasses. Hey, Karen's I, I here. Didn't hear your glasses. Oh, sorry, I was AFK for a second. Hang on, Karen, you're getting replaced by a postcard. Uh, <laughs> it says, uh, "Will they stop hate crime laws from hurting us?" Somebody actually sent me a postcard with that on the back. It wasn't why? written. It wasn't written in crayon or in cutout letters, so it's fine. But why I, is one word crossed out weirdly? I, I what? Because he didn't want to do a new postcard. I don't know. Don't care. All right. Uh, feed- well, let's table the rest of the stuff and let's get to Karen. Fine. And we can do it. It's books next. You've got books. It's right? books. It's books. It's fine. And I've got books next. Karen, it's no, Karen is more important. Karen is a celebrity now. Uh well, Karen is a valuable member of the Flat Earth community, as we all She's are. She's a celebrity and she should be attacked at every opportunity. <laughs> well, you know what? That happens. That's what we've all accidentally signed up for. We didn't even know it. But Karen B is here. Link to her channel is in the description box. You did a BBC interview. And when was this? How did it come about? And what's the inside story on like the prep beforehand and how you felt about doing it? Um, okay, I did it uh, this past Monday. What happened was this um, man by the name of Chris Browning uh, messaged me on Facebook and he just said, hey, I'm a reporter for BBC. Um, I've seen your videos and I think you're well-spoken. So I'd like to do an interview with you. And so I agreed. And um, then he messaged me a little bit later and he's like, hey, I found a radio station that you can go to to record the interview. And I was like, I have to go to a radio station? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, because you know it's easier for one station to connect to another station and you know the recording is better. And so I said, okay, I agreed. So um, he sent me the information on it and I went to this station and recorded the interview. That was- that's basically it. That's how it happened. So he was talking to you at the station, like through a computer, and then you would answer his questions. Right. Well, but you didn't see each other. No, I didn't see him. It was like they, the stations connected to the other stations. I don't know how it works. But right. Right. That's what happened. And then actually, the person I was talking to was a woman. I started talking to a woman, and and then, but he was there too. But the interview was between me and this other woman. I don't know if she's like a radio. Oh, I see. Or whatever, but. So they had um, maybe her booking agent get it all set up. Things are different in radio now than when I was in radio, which is the 80s. So things are way completely different with the way they do things in technology and all of that. But wow, that's great that he heard about you. He admired the way you run your channel and he thought you were articulate and well-spoken. Obviously all of these things are true and decided to do this interview. 
did ahead of time, they give you an idea of what it was going to be about or give you any questions or ask you anything to send them first? No, they didn't do any of that. Um, so I just showed up and they just started asking me questions. But I mean, it was all like the typical questions that you get asked, you know, how did you get into Flat Earth? You know, um, what started you down this path? You know, questions like that. Um, then, they, of course, they ask about NASA and CGI and what about all the scientific proof? And I'm like, well, there is no scientific proof. You know, it's like just all those typical questions that you get from. And they didn't, uh, there was no ambush. They didn't have a subject matter expert waiting in the wings. No, it was just me and the radio host. Good. I, that's fair because if they're going to do that sort of thing, bullying, I think that would be, if they didn't tell you about it ahead of time, it would make you want to walk away. But if it was especially a live interview or if they were going to use it, regardless if you walked or not, and it would have you walking because you, an expert was there, it wouldn't look good. So, whew. Kind of like um, the, the Flat Earth musician, I think it was Andrew, that did Round and Curvy when they he did the interview and they brought in Richard Garriott. Yeah. Because he lived in the same city. And what? I had a, after three years, this guy all of a sudden decides to take a shot at us? Mm -hmm. Stunning. And, and he had a notebook with him on top of it. He he like had a like a list of, of notes that he wanted to go off of. And he was kind of scrambling. But yeah, I, by the end of that interview, I wanted to throttle that man. <laughs> so did you find that there were any questions that they asked you that were um, things you, I know you said they are all the questions that we've all heard before, but was there anything a little different or a different approach or thought process? Um, they, well, one question she asked that I don't get very often, she asked me if it was lonely being a flat earther. <laughs> mm. Wow. Well, can you tell us your answer to that? Well, I said, no, it's not lonely being a flat earther. I said, you know, um, I said at first, you know, before I started speaking about it publicly, it was kind of lonely because I didn't really have anybody to talk to about it. But I said, once I did start talking about it, there's a whole bunch of people out there that think the same way I do and said, so now I have a lot of friends, a lot of people to talk to. I have the best conversations almost on a daily basis. I said, so now I enjoy it. <laughs> Exactly. I agree. In fact, we've got friends in countries all over across the plane, people that we never would have met if it weren't for Flat Earth. We, I never would have been talking to people in, as I do in Australia and everywhere that we speak to people. It's, um, it's great. And it's not a reason to get into Flat Earth to make, to make new friends, but people don't need to worry about loneliness if they get involved in Flat Earth. There is a community. It's not a community that will hang on to you if you decide you don't want to make videos anymore, or you don't want to be in chats, or you don't want to be a part of it. It's not like a cult or anything. But, you know, if you're here, uh, there's more than enough awesome, friendly people that'll want to have these kinds of conversations that I only dreamt about having before I got involved in this. Because most people that you meet, even loving family members, people don't want to have deep conversations about real issues. It's mostly like, what do you want to eat? What, you know, what about the new movie with Blake Lively? Um, you know, just let's go to the mall. It's nothing ever that, that, that takes your heart and your soul and your mind and combines it all together and makes you feel alive the way Flat Earth and all the assorted other mm, truth issues have done for all of us yeah because the conversations you have you talk about things that really matter it's there's no, there's not really anything superficial you know that that is involved with flat earth it's like and it's not just flat earth it's everything that sort of ties into that everything everything that they lie about you know it's all all of it ties together so yeah I think it's great. And we're not paranoid either. Even if I believe we've everything's a lie now, pretty much, I'm not paranoid or, um, you know, hiding at home, you know, like we was scared of every noise and shadow. It's not like that at all. I feel braver, stronger, more well equipped to deal with that quote unquote real world, which is the fake world, which is outside my door, because I have a pretty good grasp of what's going on where before when I was in the matrix, um, you know, and, I, and like all of us, I was slowly coming out of the matrix before Flat Earth. Um, I, I thought it was in a normal world. And now I look at it and think that the people that are in it 
I don't, I guess I was happy, so they must have been happy, but maybe I wasn't happy because if I were completely happy, why did I start searching for deeper meaning? Mm -hmm. So people have that, what do they call it? A vague sense of ennui, a restlessness about what life's true meaning is. And that will send them in many different directions. They'll look at school shootings or they'll, they'll delve deeper into their religion or a different religion, or they'll do studies uh, on um, flat earth, for example, or any of these other things, health issues. And it'll bring them one way or the other around the campfire of flat earth, where all of these things are unified. I think it's the greatest thing ever. I agree. <laughs> Agreed. Yay, flat earth. Woo. <laughs> um, all right. So you didn't feel that you were jumped on. You felt uh, that this was a, a good thing. Now, here's the question. It didn't go live because it was. Yeah, it was pre-recorded. Okay. So, you know, a lot of times you do an interview that's pre-recorded, like the one I did for CBS recently, ones Mark has done too. And then later when you see the finished product or you hear the finished product, it is what you said, but it's taken out of context and they put what you said as an answer to a different question. And it kind of makes you appear ridiculous or crazy. Do you have any, do you have faith in that they are going to do this right? Um, well, I don't know that I have a lot of faith in that. <laughs> um, but I did record myself. And when I Ooh. went, I set up my phone and I set it up on the table right next to me on my little phone tripod and I recorded every word that I said. So if they do, you know, chop it up and put take things out of context, I can, you know, I can counteract that. I can show that it was done that way. Right, right. Well, I don't think you have to worry too much unless there was a part where, and you know it. I mean, we've all done the the speeches and the the ramblings long enough. Was there any moment where you were talking, you were kind of fumbling, going, "Oh man, I hope they hope this hope they don't edit that a certain way," or you thought you had it pretty much down? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, I, I thought I did okay. I mean, I haven't done a lot of interviews, so, you know, I'm not really that experienced in doing it, but, um, I just answered the questions as honestly as I could. And I, I don't feel like I was fumbling. Um, I'm sure there's things that I might have left out that I could have mentioned. I'm sure somebody will listen to it and go, well, why didn't you say this? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's always the way. I listen to things I've done and think, oh, my gosh, I should have said it this way or should have added that really important element or the way I said it made it seem like I was saying this when I was really saying that. But there's nothing we can do about it because that's normal human communication. You're a great communicator, Karen. We all know that who, who listened to your channel or heard, heard you do live hangouts you don't have anything to worry about other than just the normal stuff that all of us have to worry about when we just speak freely. So, but it'll be cool when it comes out. Did they tell you when? They said that it would come out around the same time as the conference. So mm, interesting that they're saving up stuff for around the conference. Do we know what channel it will? Well, okay. Are they going to give you a heads up? Because with radio stuff, it doesn't show up on the search engines as quickly as other things. Do you know where it's going to be? Roughly? But I mean, I, I can message the guy on Messenger and I'll ask him about it. All right. I mean, if if he's if he's written you back and forth more than once, he'll probably tell you. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're yeah. going to air it on such and such. Hmm. So. And also, you can make a video from it and put it on your channel. I'm telling you things you already know, like I'm some grand dame of flat earth. But you could also <laughs> make a video of the thing you recorded of just you speaking, too, and put it like a link in the description box. Yeah. So that everybody would want to hear the whole thing. Yeah, okay. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save it and see how what they do with the interview. And then, you know, and if I feel like I need to, I'll release my version of it. Right, I mean, right. You know, it's audio is not going to be as good as theirs. And then I was wearing headphones. So you're only going to hear my answers, not their questions. Right. So. Well, I am sad that I didn't use my phone, which I had with me uh, when the CBS thing happened, because that was a very lengthy interview and I didn't record it. I didn't think to record it. Mm -hmm. So, you know best laid plans of mice and men and all that. So, but then if you say, I'm going to record this too, you sound like a paranoid, <laughs> suspicious person. And that might put them back on their heels. Rob, when he did ABC, you know, he had somebody video it at the same, you know, he put his camera next to their camera and, and he told him, he goes, look, I just want to make sure that you guys are going to edit this in and make it look bad. And they didn't, you know, he was fine, but his answers were always solid. So there wasn't much they could use anyway. He is a polished professional speaker. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. 
By the way, Karen, are you are you uh, are you still nervous about your thing next month? Of course. <sighs> you should be. Well, let's let everybody know what the thing is. I mean, she's one of the speakers at the conference in Denver. Link in the description box if you don't have your tickets already. Uh, you are going to be the first day, if I'm not mistaken. If the schedule hasn't changed, what time is it at? Um, eleven. 30, 11.45, I forget. Right Just before good. lunch. I'm the Just last one before lunch, the lunch. All right. what, how long is your set? 45 minutes? Yeah, 45 minutes. Okay. Longest 45 minutes of your life. <laughs> no, 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 no. Once you, once you start long by myself, but I'm prepared. I'll, I'll be prepared. You'll be fine, and you'll have only people who love you supporting you who are there. So, you know, it'll be, it'll be great. Um, I don't even know what the ballroom looks like, where we're going to go. And obviously, I don't think you do either. So that's always an issue. You know, when you go in the room and it always looks really big because no one's in there. You know, when we arrive early and look around and it, it looks ominous. And then when you're up there on the stage, blinded by the lights, feeling like you're going to faint, it's no big deal. <laughs> that's the weird part, at which I had to get used to as well, which is once the lights hit you, you don't see because of how the stage lights are set up and yeah. that way with everything you don't see it's what the comedians call the darkness you the comedians never see the audience because they're all the lights are directly in your eyes and it's like oh, awesome and so you can and you're not really going for audience reaction in your case you'll, you'll do great it's going to be wonderful and i hear there's all sorts of little additions people that are also coming that weren't originally planned to come i don't even know if we're able to say that yet Cool stuff that's going to happen this year at that conference. It's going to, yeah. be, it's going to be awesome. It's going to I'm be super excited. Right, hundred times better than last year, I'll bet. Yeah, and you know the Raleigh one was great. It was the first one. There were issues and things that got worked out, and then by the time we got to Canada, yes, lots of things were ironed out. But it's also a different venue and some different speakers. And then now here we are in Denver, back in the states, some of the same speakers, some new speakers. It's going to be a whole different thing, but I just think that Flat Earth's grown, the community's grown. Um, there's less resistance from other members of the community, I think, than there were during the first year when people were saying that Robbie D was going to pocket all the money and the conference speakers were all going to vanish and we were all getting paid and all these other lies. Yeah. The thing went on as planned and was successful. I mean, you were there, Karen. You know, it. Great. I had a blast last year. It was yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> the, the only thing is, is that. I want to, and I say said this for Canada too, I want to enjoy it more because when you're a speaker or you're involved in the production aspect of it, you tend to be worried about that and not worried about the the fun that it is. And it zips by in a moment. But I think that's every big event that when people go to weddings or birthdays or anniversary parties, it you're so the preparation is actually the thing. The event itself is over in the blink of an eye. And I want to really relish the moment. Yeah. We will. Thank you for telling us and let us know uh, about the BBC thing. And I know Mark will be mentioning it on a strange world when we have the heads up from you that, you know, you're it's it's going to be Monday or whatever day it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And we'll be checking your channel to find out more about it. And just uh, as for your channel, is there anything that you've got coming up that we need to know about or? Um, I have a little project that me and Dr. Zach have been working on um, that um, should be out pretty soon. Not really sure exactly when, but, but before the conference. Um, so that's coming up. <laughs> Other than that, I really haven't been working too much on videos. I've been trying to prepare for the conference. <laughs> right, right. Well, that completely makes sense. Cool. All right, wonderful. And Karen B, description box is where you'll find the link to her channel. Karen, thank you for coming on. Okay, thank you for having me. Oh, but one more thing before I go. Um, my... I run that Discord server, the 24-7 Flat Earth Discord server, and the guys always ask me whenever I go on interviews, they're like, did you mention the server? And I always forget. <laughs> so I don't want to forget to mention the 24-7 Flat Earth Discord server. So if anybody is on Discord or wants to join, there's a whole bunch of people there to talk with and get information from. So you can come talk to us there too. Wonderful. And it's one of those Discord servers where it's cool, right? As opposed to some of the other ones where it's like, a pit of hell. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's totally cool. All well, right, good to know. I'm an admin there, and we have a lot of really knowledgeable people there. It's really cool. All right, wonderful. All right, that is Karen B. Thank you so Bye. much for coming on. Thank you. Bye, Karen. Bye, Bye Karen. Oh, that's good to know that she feels confident that she did a good job. But of course, I knew she would have done a good job. But yeah, right. that's a big thing being on the BBC. 
I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, I'm I'm excited to hear it. That and it well, it was important enough that what what struck me about it was it was important enough that they took her to a local station. Normally, you know, if it, they just sometimes they'll just phone it, literally phone it in where they contact you and they will call you or they will connect through Skype. No, in this case, they wanted her hard lined to the station. They wanted the best possible quality, no interruptions, uh, which is great. It's like, all right. They took it very, very, very seriously. professional, which yeah. means hopefully they'll they'll handle the whole thing, putting it together in a very professional manner. However, we know for the most part, the mainstream media might do things very professionally. And then at the end, they stick the knife in and twist it. <laughs> well, I, you know I, the people all publicity I, is good publicity in the it's end. It's true. Because all of us are here because somebody else talked about Flat Earth before we got here and we heard about it. We saw something. Does so, all publicity, good publicity, is that a segue? Into um, Mad, Mike. Mad Mike? Yeah, it's a perfect. <laughs> Segway, I planned it. Seems I thought so. <laughs> I, I, I knew it. It was in the notes here somewhere. Yeah. Well, uh, what should we say about Man Mike? He's um, back at uh, it again. He has, well, I mean, uh, the interviews, uh, okay, The he was the back half of the CBS Sunday morning interview that you did. So yes, and that they, link in the description box so you can watch that. Right. So they interviewed you at the meetup and Netta, and they included a clip from D Marble and a couple other people that were doing stuff. In fact, we we do we still we still don't know because I look they 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 um they blurred it out. Whose video was that with the moon and the clouds? Yeah, and I don't even think that was the moon. That looked like the sun. Was it? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Somebody look at somebody watching. <laughs> it was weird. I didn't recognize the person's what, voice at all in that video. The hive mind will know. I say mm -hmm. I, I didn't recognize the video. And I've seen a lot of sun and moon videos and mm -hmm. I did not. Who knows? Anyway, the back half. Gonna, you keep talking. I'm going to go into the live chat. Does anybody know what we're talking about? Does anybody about? know what we're talking about? There was a at little all. mention. <laughs> Since we started the show. Of the moon and the clouds. They were talking about the things that Flat Earthers believed in. That the moon, you know, that there's clouds in front and behind it. Which isn't even true. Some do. Some don't. Some do. Uh, I hate but those also they, statements. Well, heck, if, it, if we're going to go to that far, let's, let's pick apart the fact that the first link they put in their description... The Flat, the Flat Earth, Flat Society. Earth Society. In fact, I had a student from NYU interview me this afternoon. It's going to be a two-part thing. And she she brought up the Flat Earth Society. In fact, she was she was in the forum. She was trying to join it. And I said, no, no. And it, again, I, I want to be clear. I said, look, it's not. Is it going to harm you? Are you sure she wasn't in IFERS? <laughs> no, no, she wasn't. She was actually, no, I, I don't get into it. But, but no, she was absolute. We did it on video, uh, her and I. And... I said, it's not going to hurt you, but it's going to slow you down because you're going to go there and then eventually you're going to turn right back around and go to YouTube because that's where all the content is. Everybody knows it. I mean, yes, there's some websites here and there, but the flatter, the formal flatter society is not going to optimize your flat earth. Didn't someone period. from the flatter society speak with Globusters at one point way, way in the back? Well, they spoke days. with me as well. I may, might be wrong about that, Bob. Is that what did, happened? Did, did I? Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, the, at some they call, point, somebody they called, they called me about 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. And you know that story where they said, oh, yeah, we, we like what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. And I, I had to be as blunt as I could. It's like, where have you guys been? Oh, yeah. We've, we've been just tearing up social media, just destroying it. And now you come forward. It's like, oh, yeah, you guys are doing fine. It's like, we don't even know your names. Whoever you guys are, you guys, and here's the part that threw me. I'm surprised that the Flatter Society, we haven't seen, find me a single video on YouTube made by the Flatter Society that anyone has, has I've, I've never been forwarded to me. It's like it's the, the weakest society I've ever heard of. Yeah. There's no I, members. I, I mean, it's like, look, they, they are, here's the comparison. They are 1.0. We are Flat Earth 2.0. Mm hmm. And, 1.0 do you keep doing you want to keep using that old version fine that's fine well but. that's where all of these mainstream people get this idea that flat earthers believe we live on a disc floating in endless space yeah accelerating uh -oh. upwards at nine <laughs> meters per second per second it's like what no and well then again every once in a while someone will flash that video of the guy that says there's no australia oh yeah that's always great 
It was like I one mean, guy. <laughs> and, and and it was a it was a Facebook post as well. And I think it was a prank Facebook post. Yeah. Nobody so. thinks that Australia isn't there. Anyway. I mean, anyway. I know some Australians. A couple okay, of them so I let, wish let, weren't there, but let's let's circle God back. On, I'm looking at you. <laughs> circle back around to, to Mad Mike. So CBS yeah. had to go and interview him at his location because he did not come to the meetup and they had to they had to go to him and they use part of he, the um, the segments from the documentary that's about him and they they, they talk to him directly now he said okay why are we bringing up mad mike okay so he 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 bookended that segment of cbs morning show and then and that was just last sunday just a couple days ago and then what happened last night i think it was last night it wasn't monday night i think it was last night uh there was a segment again i don't know what month daniel tosh from tosh.0 shot it but they released on tosh.0 the segment with mad mike where mad mike actually went to daniel tosh's studio and shot a whole segment on green screen and i didn't hate it it was funny it, it was, was funny low brow it was frat boy it would it definitely was offensive toward women um yeah two women but you know whatever yeah probably not the best year to do that but it was funny i did laugh oh yeah i laughed too but it was it was daniel's setup that made it funny daniel was i, I yeah he's I've, very talented professional I've, and humorous but, yeah i've listened you know. to his hbo specials and i think he's got he's got a real you know biting wit. yeah oh yeah no question uh, so yeah, so Mad Mike was on there. So great exposure, and uh, that's and Mad Mike looks good in that you know uniform that he's got. It looks like kind of a professional race tech racers uniform. Looks nice. You know, you know what they say: the clothes make the man. Yeah, I guess so. Or his I hair. Hate I hate that saying. Yeah, and the hair, which <laughs> yeah. So I lose twice in that, in that uh, department. Um, I do want to say hello to Brian from Humana Story, who's in our live chat. I just made him a moderator. So he said hello to you, Mark, and hello to me. So, so nice. Brian, to, to Brian, Brian. Has, Brian has joined again. I made new characters for my World of Warcraft guild, which is called Flat Earth. Nice. So even when I'm gaming, I'm representing yo. And <laughs> even when you're driving, you're representing as even when I'm driving, I have flat earth license plate. When I'm driving yeah. up to, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but yeah, and when, when I'm, I'm eating I'm, pizza, I'm representing flat earth. <laughs> yeah. So I am trying to put it out there every freaking chance I get. And yeah, and, and yeah, I do get comments every once in a while because people just stare at me as I'm walking by because your guild name is right above your character. So we'll say Mark Sargent, flat earth, and people are like, what? Is that a real thing? Is that, is that a, a thing? <laughs> and they'll throw it in general chat every once in a while. And, and you know, and everyone, I think I've told you every once in a while, going to chat and people are still talking about it. You know, that's doesn't go away. So, well, that's good. And, you know, Mad Mike obviously is not around to prove the earth is flat. He did his two launches He's, and he was able to see what one could see who would actually be in an airplane. He is a stuntman. He is brave. I could never do that. Um, and uh, he's doing what he feels is best to get flat earth out his way. And hey, I mean, he has the right to do that. Yep. <laughs> so. I'm not, it, it got a lot of attention and it generated a huge amount of media interest. For for that, he gets props, plain and simple. Exactly. What so, he, I, we'll I'd see. like him to get more involved in the community. Well, but I mean, you know. I, I, I did try to interview him. Um, I talked to him on the phone twice from this very room. We were going to set up an interview. He was to call me the following day and he never did. And then that sort of just faded out and then we never connected. Mm. But eh, life goes on. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know how uh, we mentioned a little bit earlier how um, people say that all flat earthers believe that this or all flat earthers believe that you know the right. people who don't know anything about flat earth the ones right. who hate flat earth they right. say these crazy things so, like all flat earthers are christians all flat earthers believe in jesus half. all half. flat earthers yeah. believe in a dome i mean all of these sorts of things those kinds of blanket statements made by globe believers um they don't help anything but what does help is a post I saw on Facebook today by Brian S. Staveley. He might be in our live chat today, and I'm going to read it. He writes, the idea of people disliking other researchers over differing views on dome, no dome, planes, no planes, et cetera, et cetera, is too much. 
We all are trying to piece together these deceptions and get through years of disinfo. While people have been seeking truth for generations and generations, most of us have been at this less than a decade. To think we all have the answers or we all are going to agree is ludicrous. Everyone is at a different stage. And even if not, everyone doesn't even have the same material to look at. We're not, we are all on the same side here for the most part. So we should start to act like it. You think that we're planes on 9-11 or we've been to the moon? We can still be friends. Imagine that. Let's have the discussion. Be the solution, not the problem. I really like that Facebook post that came out from Brian Staveley this morning on Facebook. And he is a flat earther and looks into all sorts of different things. The thing is, is that we all want truth. We may have different views about the shape of the world, but there's no sense in calling people names, any sort of disparaging name calling or being mad at somebody because they're not the same religion as you, or they believe that there's, um, you know, an infinite plane when you might believe there's a dome. Um, just chill. We'll get there. And we can only get there if we work together. Well said. Thank you. Well, I don't think it was your <laughs> words, but whatever. Um, what should we jump on next? How about the books? Let's go to books because we were doing books and then Karen rudely interrupted us. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had to give her time because of the whole BBC thing. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> She's cool, I guess. Yeah. Um, for a girl with a gun, you know, for a girl with a girl cool. with a gun, sultry voice, yeah, you know, you know. eyes, you're seeing eyes too, and right. yeah, <laughs> never get out of. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, you no. go with your books, and then I'll go with my books next. Don't shoot us. Okay, so the first one is that it took me a while to get, which was uh, Robbie Davidson's book called Scientism Exposed. Oh, I've got mine too. So I've only got one book now. I'll show mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want to show it at the same time? Yep. Scientism We exposed. were pre-orderers, I would imagine. And what what is what does this mean? It means that it something I said about my speech, which is when science decides it's going to become a religion, then it jumps the rails from science and becomes scientism. You know, at that point, they might as well have robes and hoods and, you know, chanting. Um, one of Aruba. us. <laughs> what? Did we both chant at the same time? <laughs> yes. That's... But I said one of us and you said Arubaka. <laughs> Arubaka. <laughs> and I, I stole I stole that. If people would say, oh my God, he's talking in a dead language. I said, no, 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 no. I stole that from, uh, it's one of my favorite lines from National Lampoon's Vacation when Chevy Chase was giving the, see, you've got a hood. <laughs> you've got a hood. <laughs> one, <That's>... <laughs> one of us. One of us. It's Patricia. She's join a, our cult. She's a druid. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, when um, uh, when his mother in law died, and he gave that that impromptu funeral in the rain behind the house that they dropped her off as, and he was like, he started to chant at some some point. I think it was in Hebrew. Whatever. Anyway, so this is it. Scientism exposed. Robbie Davidson on the back. Now I have got book number twenty. The twentieth copy that came out what's yours if you look right in the inside there'll be a piece of paper do you have you one 20 on? yeah what's yours 85 uh i bought mine before you how I'm did you cooler. buy yours before me because i'm cooler sorry anyway yeah thanks the, to robbie yeah, d oh please do tell me <laughs> how you are the definition of cool you were telling me that part about kenny g again uh yeah i, I did work That's at a, a radio station that played i did work at a radio station that played kenny g yeah, that's from that's from Clueless. I stole that yeah. line from Clueless. Right. I mean, seriously, I really did. Uh, in San Francisco, on the weekends, there was a station that was an FM radio that only started because of the O.J. Simpson thing. And during the weekday, all the high paid news people would be on doing talk shows covering the case as it was, you know, coming into fruition and, you know, experts and, and that was kind of thing. Right. And then during the trial, but during the weekend, of course, you know, court wasn't in session. So what would they do? They had like smooth jazz on. And I was hired to be a weekend, what they called a board operator. You didn't talk. <laughs> you were basically a computer operator. You push buttons, played the commercials, and occasionally got to do the weather, the highlight of my shift on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. But I had to play Kenny G music and all sorts of other music like that. So yeah, I'm not that cool after all. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the, the link to uh, the explanation. The, yeah, well, so Kenny G and me, we go way back, unfortunately. Uh, if you want this book, it's in the description box. Link to it from Amazon. Robbie cool. D's newest. Did you say you had a second book? Yeah, I do, but you go. All right. I'm putting chapstick on. 
Oh, that's okay. one of those things. It's one of the things I do. I probably own guy. 20, 20 things of chapstick. Every you jacket. One that looks like a lipstick still? Yeah, I do have one. That's totally, red, white, blue? totally a guy. And it's, no, it's it's kind of that, uh, what's that ice cream? It's called ne Neapolitan? Neapolitan ice cream colors. There's I know, no and it's and it's in a lipstick tube, and I know it. It, hey, you put lip liner on first. Uh, all Lose God's moss. all God's children. I'm not judging. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Feminine products. Some of them are better than male products. In fact, a lot of them, I think. Okay, this one was from the call in last night, and with a woman uh, called me and said, "Did you get my book?" And it's like, oh wow, thank God she reminded me, uh, because it was sitting here with my other flat Earth swag. And it is called, she, she published this herself. It's called Flat Earth for Dummies. Whoa. Oh my gosh. What? What? Oh my God. <laughs> the same one. <laughs> what are the odds? Yes. Elaine Chadwick Clanton. Yeah. Thank you. Author You're of. You're writing this book. Murder and Marcella. Or hmm. Marcella. <laughs> She's but from yeah, North Carolina, I, 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 I by did, the way. I like did glance, and this is, this is, this is a pretty thick book, right? And there's there's a lot of images in it, and um, the the text the type the the font is pretty big. So um, she get... lived in Miami. She lived in uh, South Florida for a number of years, and she's got children. And she the the mystery novel is the one that you're talking about, Murder in Marcella, uh, that was set in North Carolina. And mm. Flat Earth for Dummies 101 is her first endeavor into the uh, the world of this sort of conspiracy stuff. So yeah, so she did a nice job. And thank you for for making that. I mean, there's quite a few. I mean, this is, uh, I have gotten quite a few. We didn't even books. compare notes. I said I've got some. No, books. we didn't. I've got books, and they're the same darn they're the book. Same book. We are not very original or cool. No, uh, we're. Connected. I'm going to put my hoodie back on and start chanting. You would get the mojo <laughs> going. <laughs> you would think that. Okay, well, I got something that, that you don't have happening. Well, but... I obviously you do, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> that's a whole what? No. No. Sorry. What? Wait a minute. Was that what? really? Yeah. Is that is that is that your attempt at at it was just sort of lowbrow humor? I, wow, I'm impressed. Who you been hanging out with? Construction workers? <laughs> no. Well, I did see Mad Mike on Tosh 2.0, and so it kind of made me rub off. On me. Yeah, I got it. Okay, let, let me take one more one little jab there. It's like, come on, man. I, I the one boys one boys. one sorry one joke about picking up girls in bars that's one thing but oh my god he just kept going yeah and it's like okay yeah i know it's easy for daniel to play off of that i i get it but this isn't the man show mm. okay this isn't back in the day when joe i Rogan... did laugh though so i must have a part of me that has like a small dark corner of myself that likes really low level frat boy humor. I mean, I did like Beavis and Butthead when it came out. It I laughed so hard I cried. So yeah. I liked all the, the airplane movie? movies. The the Beavis and Butthead movie or the series? See the series. Yeah. I liked all the airplane movies, you know, the uh, automatic pilot. I mean, you know, you know, humor comes in many forms, you know? Yeah, but that was 1980. That was a long. Well, whatever time age ago. I was, it hasn't changed my perspective of things that are. Um, yeah, that know. was di that was different. Though, I just know if I went the... on a major talk show, I wouldn't be talking about sex. There were certain there were me. jokes you could get away with, and in, in yeah, I wouldn't talk about sex on a talk show either. Probably, I mean, unless they asked, and then I'd be like, "Yeah, I'll talk about." Then it. you'd be like. <laughs> all right yeah, uh, yeah, well since yes but i'm not going to i'm not going to throw out stories about what i did because well one i didn't frequent bars i used didn't, to pick I, up chicks in bars i'm like whoa yeah i tmi <laughs> it's like okay but it made it memorable people yes, laughed, it did. People smiled yeah. you know what it's showbiz yep. uh, Matt mike's a showman that he is so no hey. question cool no question Okay, so what are we, what are we segueing into? Uh, we are segueing into me going into the live chat and saying hi to everyone. And okay, then you think about something. I already got something. But I know you do have something, but I just want to say chat. hello. We already did say hi to Brian from Humana Story. Um, let's see, Awakened Mind. Hello, Manuel Aviles, Crazy Flat Lady. Hello, 
there. And Mayo Zombie and said, Mayo Zombie said, what's the topic, guys? Are they talking about books? Indeed we are, sir. Hello, Zulu One, who says, subliminal hot sex, Mark Sargent. <laughs> well, I take offense hot sex to that. Exactly. Hello to Nathan Oakley, 1980, and Arwin, and Mark Ofsky. Hello. And Flat Accord Music, and Ute, and Travis Cloud. And uh, let's see, Five Arts Liberalis. Hello. How are you? Belinda Verges and Zane. And um, did I already say Ridgeview? Maybe. Uh, Zader64. And hello to Martin Leakey and CVH. Now I'm going to go up to the top because a lot of the names that were, they've already gone off the screen, but I'll see what I can do. Zoe, be here in love. And um, did I say Nordy K. Knudsen? Maybe I didn't. You did Maybe not. Maybe I did. She's awesome. Um, who else? Uh, Nora, no one's flower. Hello. Um, scrolling down to um, GoPro Flat Earth UK Darb. And um, scrolling down even further to Chris Topher. Hello, Chris. Shanna Honea. Hello there. Glad to have you here with us. Stephen Watson. Plain Permaculture. Hey there. Rob Wiggles and uh, Conan68. Closet Steve is here. Out of the closet? In the closet? I was about to say, is Steve in the closet? Don't know. Is that a flat closet or the other closet? <laughs> I'm not sure. Erica Kakuza says, I'd like to go to the conference if Mad Mike will be there. Will he be there? Um, would be cool to meet him. He's doing something. Yeah, he is doing something. This is true. And you know what? I don't know if he's going. There are tickets still available. Um, he definitely could go. And I think it would be a very wise choice if he did go to the conference. I certainly hope he does. He could park that rocket right out in the parking lot, get some attention. But who and could knows? Oh, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, hello to Thomas Harlan and Cammie Aisling here as well. And scrolling just a little more, Nameless is here, otherwise known as S S E L M A N S S S S E L E M A N. I can't spell. Um, Dave Sims as well, and Anders Ace, and everyone. I'm gonna quit now because you know, otherwise it'll just be like me reading names. Like, uh, what was the show Romper Room? Remember that back in the old old days, American uh, yeah. uh, children's program where there would be a woman holding a mirror, which wasn't really a mirror. It was just a cardboard cutout of a mirror. And she would say, romper, stomper, boo, some rhyme. And then she would say to the kids in TV land watching, not the children that were actually on the set that were part of the show. Oh, I see Susie list. and Mary and Marky and Patty and <laughs> that kind of thing. I wow. feel like, sometimes feel like that when I'm reading chat, but I, I'd love... If I'm in a chat and somebody mentions my name, none of us are immune to that, by the way. We all like to hear our own names said by somebody because it, it feels good. Hey, hi to Bipolar Flat Earth 2. And um, who else? Somebody, uh, Daniel Reza and Earth Creature and Peanuts Clark. And there was somebody I wanted to say hi to that I might have missed. But anyway. Uh, it's okay. You don't have to. I'll live, right? You'll live. Okay. It's okay. It's all totally right. fine. We all can right, always right. come back to it. You don't have to worry. You are, you're not letting him oh, down. Oh, Paul on the plane. I think that's, that's why. Really, Paul on the plane. You're well, actually. I mean, I have to mention Paul on the plane. Oh. Hey, let's talk. Um, there's Brian from Humana Story back again. Hello, glad to see you here. Carrie Musgrave is here too, um, and Helioskeptic and Metal Dog Rides. Oh my gosh, new people coming in all the time. Oh, and give the video a thumbs up, you guys. We've had some weird stuff. Secret show, maybe two back. I think it's got seven thumbs up and like fourteen thumbs down. And it's Which got thousands of movie. views. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was back when YouTube was having some difficulties ratings. other than the ones it had yesterday. Yeah. Let's talk about that. But first, hello to Roxanne, the globalist denier. Okay. The YouTube apocalypse. I mean, I'm calling it that, but it was only an hour, but it was notable because I was worried. I was like, on Skype, I was on Facebook and I was on Twitter and just trying to let everybody that I knew in my little small circle about what was happening. Cause I think it's important to us because our connection is through YouTube. Through YouTube, yeah. The the flat earth community, I mean, yeah, YouTube has a billion subs overall, which is massive. You know, that's three times more than the entire population of the United States. 
uh but at the same time it was repaired now they're not going to say how it happened probably not going to say until much later and they'll probably just make up something like some guy it. just pushed the wrong button because oh no no they'll blame it on uh Simpson on, at work eating a donut <laughs> they'll blame it on russia or blame it on china i think it was on, blamed on pakistan last i checked well that was no no the pakistan one that was that was the first time that was weird that was the uh, peanut gallery sent that to me as well yeah but, but that was back in 2008. Well, people were saying though that this also was part of that same thing. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. And, I mean, and even in the live chat, a couple people are saying Pakistan, Pakistan. It, it I don't does, believe it, but it does show you how integrated we are, because when YouTube and I, there were there were messages that I've never seen before on on YouTube where it was like a giant, it was like the the giant um, tech support monkey version of it where it, I've, I've never seen it blown up like that. It's like, wow, that's pretty impressive. But yeah, it was down for everybody uh, in every country for a solid hour. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, impressive, <laughs> it, you know, because it is weird. And it makes you think like, wow, they could pull YouTube. And that's what would happen. We'd yeah. all be like, oh, no, oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. And messaging each other. And then after a while, we'd be like, it's the new normal. There's no more YouTube. Well, yeah, but but remember, YouTube, a wholly owned subsidiary of Google, it, it, we're talking about billions of dollars, and they're not gonna they're not gonna let it go. Right, and I was thinking it's, about those channels that um, they make their full lifetime oh, income on no, YouTube. There's not that many by comparison. There's only a, a tiny well, like percentage. Like PewDiePie, all those beauty gurus. Shane. Shane, I mean, there's, there's you uh, Jeffrey know, Star, right, right. That's uh, one of the beauty gurus, yeah. Franco, whatever um, his name is, yeah. Keem Star, a person whose specialty is talking about YouTube drama. Boy, right. he should get a get a load of flat earth. <laughs> yeah, we don't even have to write our stuff, it just happens, <laughs> it just happens daily. <laughs> Put a whole bunch of flat earthers in there, which is weird because in person, everybody in flat earth is really great. Yeah. It's when they're removed, when they're detached from each other, that they go ape. Whatever. Well, people are keyboard warriors. If they are a person with an unhappy something in their life, yes, they are. Uh, they and become keyboard warriors in order to like exercise their demons. They're the ones that are doing these sort of things. And people will often ask me, either in person or through email or chat, it's like, don't you get a lot of hate emails? Do you know? Do people write you, Mark? And it's like, no, no, I've they don't. I've got only a very few. And one very of them is death threat that you got the same one. or Exactly. We got the same. We were carbon copied on the same <laughs> death threat, which was by a European who, had, who apologized and then clarified and apologized again. Exactly. And that's that, not usually the way death threats work. No, no. You want to do death threats. You generally don't even threaten people. You don't tell them you, if you're if you're telegraphing it ahead of time. Generally, you don't follow through. Right, right. Uh, but most remember, most trolls, the reason why I don't get many emails. Oh, of course, the comment sections are just horrible. They're, they're, yeah, they're, yours, yours is unmoderated. Yeah, mine is. Well, I mean, there's some moderators. They just don't. I don't I don't encourage mo moderating because eh, people are going to do what they're going to do. Uh, well, there's sometimes people that just go in there and say stuff like, Mark, you're an F, F, F. And if I see those, I'll take it out. This is adding nothing to the conversation. It's yeah. not disagreeing, which is fine, or it, giving an alternate view of the way the world looks, which is fine, it, or, or disputing a point you might have made. No, it's just saying something disgusting. It. You remember that video which we, we revisited recently, which was, uh, what if YouTube was a classroom? Oh, right, right. Right. Yes. And that girl that walks by the door, she didn't even come in the classroom mm -hmm. and she pokes her head and she goes, I don't know what you guys are doing in here, but I don't like it. Thumbs yeah, down. Thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, I, it's, it's like a drive by. People are coming in. It's like they look five seconds like, nah. Oh, there's people who just say, oh, there's a video by that red haired potato chick. Thumbs down. And my 50 sock channels, too. Or, or people like, well, that okay. come in and they. Thanks for the view. <laughs> the, the part that, that kills me. And I don't know if it's an American thing or just a hater thing where it's the video is really, really good. And it's like 100. I've never seen it go to like 200 to nothing. I've seen it goes about like 140, 150. And then that's too much for a troll. There will be trolls. It's like, you know what? First thumbs down <laughs> just because they can. It's like, I'm, you know, I'm not with these guys. I'm just going to give it a thumbs down because I don't like all these thumbs up. 
there's these um, channels that have, it's not cute cat videos, but it's cats in a special home for cats where they're giving birth and it's these secret cameras and grooming each other and just like living in peace. And there's these really lovely people who've taken these cats in and, right. you know, they're, 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 they're living only due to the goodness of people's kind hearts. Right. And there's people that go in and thumbs those videos down. I mean, like, how? I know. It'd be like thumbsing down a, very well-run rescue organization for homeless children. Uh, look, you, you and I have had this discussion many times, which is you could have you could make a video with no music, just a kitten and a puppy trying to squeeze into the same slipper Aww. with a with a butterfly kind of dancing around over the top of them, and you're going to have people come in and say thumbs down, comment that is effing gay. <laughs> And that's it. It's like we. I mean, in the first day, you'll see that's like why, why is it is it is it so miserable in your world? Well, that that's what have? it's all about. You said the key words. Hmm. Is it so miserable in your world? The answer yeah. is yeah. Must be. It must be because you just see darkness. You see an <laughs> evil cat and an evil puppy squeezing into a rotten slipper. And it's not a butterfly. It's a bat. <laughs> it's coming to kill you. <laughs> it's dripping fangs. It's like, no, no, it's not. Uh, not. Um, it's I, I do want to say hello to Reggae Mama and Magsent. Hi, nice to see you here. Um, and just Jack Flat Earth is here. And Brian Burton, who I missed earlier, who said she doesn't like me. No, I do like you very much. What, Brian um, Burton? Yes. Nah. <laughs> it's okay. Nah, nah. So. Um, yeah, we had something else to talk about, too. Um, this. Oh, yes. Oh, by the way. <laughs> yes, I bought clipboards. So, because it's it goes with the uh, the whole lab coat thing. Oh, it certainly does. Yes, yes. I could be holding. Yeah, this clipboard could have all sorts of fun information on it. But the point that I'm holding a clipboard, and that's what I'm also encouraging. I'll encourage people to do when I'm at the conference, which is, if you're doing street activism, you want to have some fun messing with people's minds. Don't just wear the lab coat. Wear a lab coat and have a clipboard with some just blank pieces of paper on it. There's right. a, there doesn't have to be anything on it. All you have to do is look because people think clipboards are smart. They think they're intelligent, and or a they, pen in your pocket, or fake glasses, or real glasses if you right. wear glasses. You can you can have. I mean, if you're going to use a microphone, if you want to write on the clipboard, you don't even have to write anything. That pen doesn't even have to work, and it still has the desired effect. Okay, so what's well, on the one of the things that I think is not recommended at the conference is, is this look. Is wearing Join our cult flat. Earth. <laughs> one of us. One of us. Oh, oh! Now you're going to take me back to I think it was um, not Shaun of the Dead, but um, Hot Fuzz, uh, the movie by um, Edgar Wright, and that was one of the things. One of us, or the greater good. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so no, it's a good look. I like the hood thing. It's really cool. It's this is made of that. Um, it's not velvet. It's called velour, and it was really popular in the '80s. It's super soft and very retro, but it's literally so soft that um, it's as soft as a kitten. Somebody could probably find a picture of this on YouTube and give it a thumbs down because it's just <laughs> soft. <laughs> nice. Okay, so a little heads up. I'm not going to be doing an email show this weekend, and uh, you probably won't be able to find me real easily because oh, I... Oh, I will. I've got... You know, I've got you monitored, tagged. Whatever, tag. whatever. It's supposed to be, hey, hey, hashtag agency same team, okay? All right, all right. There's, there's rivalry, blah, blah, blah. You guys are bent out of shape after that softball loss last year. Okay, so uh, I'm doing promotional stuff for the film festival. Doctober. October. It's, I know it sounds like a like a rock festival. I like it? Rocktober. Yeah, <laughs> White Snake, Striper, Mace, Anthrax, <laughs> in the same arena. No, it. Uh, thumbs no, this up. Is... <laughs> thumbs up. My brother will be there. It's his sort of music. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. Okay, so first thing is I've been asked to go to. So behind the curve, mm. the first documentary, which of course every flat earther is going to hate, but it's going to generate tons and tons of new members. Uh, and it is showing in multiple film festivals. It already has a distributor. I will eventually find out who it is and when it's going to come out. It's but a fun human interest story, but don't expect any proofs in that. Baby. Yeah, you are not coming out of there cheering. It and is that's not. A, not why well, we planned it because we didn't have anything to do with it. But. It is not a victory lap movie, no. not by a long shot. But it is super interesting. And but I would never say no, knowing what I know now. I would never say, oh, 
take me out of that. I wish I wasn't in it. No, 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 no. And, and no flat, and flat earthers aren't going to quit over it. It's and I'm glad of every single thing I've been involved. Well, except one thing in flat earth, every single thing I've done, I'm really happy regardless of how it came out because it's just pushing it, pushing things forward, making more connections, getting the whole thing more known by, you know, the average people in, in the public. So that's true. That's true. So I am going to, the first thing I'm going to be going to is on a uh, Friday, I am flying out to Little Rock, Arkansas, and I am going to the Hot Springs Film Festival. They, it's an all expense paid thing. And it's rather posh. Are you oh, going to well, you know, well, hotels? That's a bed and breakfast with the hot springs that you can go and get yeah, like yeah, a blood bath quite, treatment. Quite, quite a change from the old place. I want to go to that. And uh, that nice. that little accent thing that was for Roxanne, if she's still listening, because she can speak in just about apparently any dialect in the UK. <laughs> she's she's very talented. And okay, so I'm going there, and here's the reason why. Uh, it's kind of a double booked thing. So the director and I were going to go up to Bellingham, Washington to the Doctober Festival, the film festival, and uh, Behind the Curve is playing up there. And But they're flying him up from LA. So they said, hey, any chance that you could go out to Hot Springs? And I said, oh man, I wish I could, but I'm already, I'm doing the thing with Daniel. And then I realized like, you know what? I'm just driving up there. To, to Bellingham, you know, because I'm, I'm not that very far away. I'm, I'm less than two hours away. So I said, you know what? If they can get me back to Seattle by noon on Sunday, I'll do it. And so I, we bounced back and forth with the travel people. And they said, yeah, yeah, we'll get you on the 7 a.m. flight. And you'll have to make a connection because there are no direct flights. You're going to hate that because on Whitby Island, you're going to have to wake up really early, then drive to where the ferry is. No, 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 nope, nope, nope. Aha. <laughs> no, because there's a shuttle, which you never took, oh, yeah. uh, which goes straight from uh, a place right down the road. It goes straight to, and you can HOV lanes. You don't have to worry about traffic and you can just sleep in it and meet flat earthers and flat smack people. And then you go to the airport and go, go off to Little Rock. All right. So, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go to, so you guys want to know where I'm going to be. If anyone's in the Little Rock area. I am going to be in Hot Springs, which is down southwest of, of Little Rock. And so I'm the only one going from the uh, from the film to this. So I'm going to be sitting there with a room full of it's going to be like Toronto. But imagine at the end when they when they do the chairs, it's just me. <laughs> really? But yeah. That's cool. You'll be able to totally handle that. No problem. I, I'm I'm. Not, not worried because at that point it's a soft sell because at that point they've already been hit for 90 minutes with flat earth so you're likable i mean i've seen the film and we know you no one's going to be angry that's in the audience no you know? no i mean I unless they're a flat earther <laughs> well, you know it's going to be the same as toronto where you and i you know people were just at the end kind of like touching us it's like my god they're real. they're real they're real <laughs> they're tell us more about this strange it, thing exactly and then we're like this <laughs> Where's my hoodie? I need, I need to cue the hoodie sooner. <laughs> there we go. Join so, us. <laughs> join us. T tell me more about the flat earth and the magic that lies therein. Right. And uh, so I'm going to be, yeah, so I'm going to be dealing with that, the Q&A. And you know how that goes. And it's the last, it's the, it is the prime time showing on Saturday night. So there oh, are no other movies. So at, at some point they're going to kick us out. I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to be in the lobby. And since I'm catching the first flight out in the morning, you guys want to talk to me all night in the lobby. That's fine. We can do that. I have no, I have no problem with that. So I then catch the 7 a.m. flight out of uh, Little Rock and I head off to Seattle. And as long as I don't miss my flight, my connection, I get in the shuttle, go to the island, get in my car, haul ass up to Bellingham and go right to another festival. This time Daniel's going to be there. I don't know if Caroline Clark's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, she might actually. And then it doesn't even matter if I watch the showing. They said, look, you've got to be there by the time we do the Q&A at eight. So then I walk right in and, you know, we plop the chairs down and I do the whole thing over again. So two festivals in two cities in 24 hours. It'll be interesting to see the what you take away from it, the pulse of the different cities and the different viewers who obviously aren't flat earthers who are there watching it and what they got off the film. 
I think the Bellingham one will be kind of an older, more relaxed set. Is that because that's just that area? I think it's that area, mm -hmm. whereas the Hot Springs looks like it's going to be like another, it's it's like another Toronto type deal where you were, remember we had a lot of film people coming in from different parts of the country. Oh, yeah. Coming in Toronto. Yeah. I mean, there's how many people from freaking Los Angeles were there? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it, yeah, it'll be interesting, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I it's weird. I rather, I am probably going to be more comfortable without Daniel than with Daniel because I'll feel bad because I mean, no offense to Daniel, but how many questions can you possibly ask him about the, the making of the movie? Well, the truth is, is that people who go watch that movie would rather talk to a flat earther than the guy who made the film. Yeah. And Unlike we, other filmmakers, where you'd want to talk about the filmmaker and the camera work and the right. direction and the you know the costuming and all of those things, but with a flat earther, a film about flat earthers, right. they want to talk to a real flat earther and they want to make sure that the people in the movie were actually really flat earthers and not just actors and actresses. I've been trying to think of an opening line, and it really comes down to the first question. And I'm I'm thinking of throwing out the thing, the line it which is everything that you saw on this screen actually happened <laughs> this was a real thing everything was as is as you saw it on screen it was not a piece of fiction and yeah. it's escalated since that thing came. oh yeah i remember that was just 2017 <laughs> 2018 has eclipsed that by a long shot and what uh, will 2019 bring and um, i think 2020 because 2020 vision that's there's going to be something revealed to us now right. i don't believe that through any sort of mystic inspiration i just think wouldn't that be cool 2020 that that is kind of weird that 2020 yeah. would be the whole realize everyone thing gets and, to see the flat yeah. earth realize flat earth 2020 make the world great again there you go uh see the world flat earth 2020 see the world as it really is or flat earth 2020 when we finally see the world as it really is somebody's start coming up with slogans I like mine best. What, just now, that's it. That's what you're sticking with. <laughs> well, I like same team. That's my that's my baby. Same team as yours. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, that's good. <laughs> twenty twenty, same team. Anyway, so that's where I'm going to be. Uh, I that's what I am doing over the next few days. And uh, again, uh, thank you to the people from October and the people from Hot Springs and whatever we do in the future. But it's already got a distributor, so I don't know how many more they're going to do because they don't necessarily have to be there. I mean, yeah, it pads the things for the distributor. But you don't have to, it doesn't have to be as frantic now. Well, maybe they've already signed up to be at different film festivals, you know? Oh, probably. So. They probably applied to all sorts. I wish they were coming to a film festival in Houston, but that's, you know, Space City. Uh, you could look it up and see when the festival is. The problem is time. There's just not enough time to do. And if you're a small team, although they do, they are asked. I mean, it's, you know, quite a few festivals fly you in. So... If you're a big celeb like Mark Sargent. Maybe. Oh, you know, I don't want to <laughs> brag. So, no, it's no, it's going to be fun. I I will enjoy the uh, the questions, and I will try to do my best to represent. And I will absolutely not drink before this thing. Funny. Um, I see that uh, Arwen is saying that we are being invaded by sock trolls. Great. <laughs> Cue the 100 thumbs down before the video is over. <laughs> Oh, whatever. The um, Brian asked a question, by the way, through Skype, which I hadn't shut down. Brian Humana Story? Brian from Humana Story, yes. Mm -hmm. He asked, hey, uh, have you been seeing a purge of channels because of what happened to Alex Jones? Not in Flat Earth, no. Mm -mm, I nope. haven't. Mm -mm. In fact, we've lost very few videos in Flat Earth, and most of those because they were non-related. So any Flat Earth channel that had shooting-related videos you know, some sort of shooting incidents. Mm -hmm. Those got ha hit pretty hard. But no, no, are you kidding? Uh, why? Flat Earth is a freaking gold mine for YouTube still. No, unfortunately, People... not for any Flat Earth content provider. Not really, yeah. But but YouTube makes quite a bit of money off us because right. as you know, uh, well, what, was, what did the one developer from YouTube say? When you get into Flat Earth for the first time, you watch 20 in a row. Yeah, and they on know average. it. Mm -hmm. They know it. That's, and that's... also... Flat Earth YouTube videos is a great place YouTube has found to put their commercials about NASA for some yeah. reason. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? Yeah, I, I, I hate those so much. It's a joke. I mean, it's like it's it's like they are they messing with our heads or they just see, I think that it's just an algorithm. So the word space 
And yeah, I think it is that. too. I don't think they're trying to hurt us. I think it's too. Yeah, Earth or space or yeah. anything. Oh well, you know how many? There's they not love many, a NASA commercial. <laughs> there's not that many space-related um, uh, sponsors out there. One of which is uh, from uh, my neck of the woods, which is Boeing, because mm -hmm. Boeing is an aerospace company. They make planes and they make weapon systems, but they do make parts for supposed space systems. The um, I was reading through some of the headlines because it's been a while since we've gone through the headlines. And did you get the thing? Oh, yeah, you did. You got the thing I sent you from. Uh, no offense. Look, I'm, I'm so white. It's just rap is lost on me. And that is uh, the white hot rapper Little Little Pump. Yeah, he is really popular right now. He is extremely popular right now. Uh, if you guys haven't checked it out, he made a little video post where he's looking straight at the camera and said the world is what scientific scientifically proven to be fat uh, to be flat, which was interesting. Well, and yeah. I found the video where that was said, and I wrote, "He's right." <laughs> so yeah, I mean, he is yeah. he is uh, very very popular in the rap world right now, and he hosted Saturday Night Live uh, just last month. Why is his name Lil Pump? I don't know. I mean, who knows? Why? Why? Why, Doctor Dre? Well, at least I, he's, Ice at least Cube, he's a doctor. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. I don't know. You know what? I used to think, and I kind of maybe still do, that Snoop Dogg was kind of cute. I don't know why. That's catchy. Yeah, no, I used to think that he actually. Looked, oh, you mean actually he was had like cute. a cute personality. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, look, they put him in movies, and he—I think he did. Like, do you remember the uh, Star like Starsky Charisma. and Hutch movie remake with no Ben Stiller, I, I and he was in that. So no, he played he played Huggy Bear in that movie. Oh wow, well, I know. That's sort of weird typecasting. Hey, I, it's a black guy. Let's make him a pimp. That's unfair. Oh, he did. He did well in it. Well, all right, it's still weird. Well, the same. Um, did you hear about China launching a fake moon? What? That's not a story. It's a story. That's I don't not know a if story. it's you know, a story that they're really going to do. Okay, it. do we have... A, sorry, I'm going to use the old internet girlfriend line on that, which is, unless you got video, <laughs> it ain't happening. All right, well... Hey, such and such has a new girlfriend, really? Got her on video? He doesn't have a girlfriend. Okay, so there's this channel, and I'm not saying I follow this channel because I don't. I'm not subscribed to them. But right. they're called The Leak Project. You've heard of them. Okay. You know this channel. Yes. These, like lots of UFO stuff. Right. And they say that China is launching an artificial moon into low orbit. I mean, uh -huh. there's a patent for an artificial sun. And. Right. And Japan is doing the space elevator. You've wait a seen minute. The, you've seen that story. No, you? that's a joke too. What? No. Oh, no, 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 no. See, use, all of these things are jokes. That's the funny part. Use a whole bunch of balloons and start and really make like it's a giant tube that goes up to where 400 miles. When they thought about that idea and decided to pull that one over on us. Uh, like, seriously. It's, a, it's. Yeah, it's not going to. No. no. Oh, by the way, Wake the Sheeple says Snoop Dogg was CIA COINTEL pro and that's a fact. I don't have any idea. Very possible. I mean, who knows? I guess. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there are people that are the sort of taste makers of society and lead society in a certain direction that turn out to be that way. Look at what happened in the whole Laurel Canyon and all of that. Hippies and the songs that were written that led people to have a certain belief system. Right. And then, of course, none of what they were wanting to have happen actually really happened, except what the CIA wanted to have happen happened. There was an interesting story on Flat Earth that was that was posted today, and I wanted to mention it because I just wanted to show you what we're up against in terms of the opposition. And it was a story by Scientific American, if I'm not mistaken, last week, last 24 hours. Oh, did they already pull it? Really? No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. They didn't pull it. Hang on. I'll find that it. That reminds me of 9-11 when you say pull it. <laughs> Scientific American. Yeah. Okay. So the story, it, and, and it's a really, really boring read. And I'm not going to read the article, but it's called, Yes, Flat Earthers Really Do Exist. And the, 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 the subtitle is, Despite Some Methodological Flaws, a recent poll credibly indicates that flat earthery persists. 
Now, most of the article is tearing apart, and you know which one they're going after. They're going after the u.gov survey, which was done by a scientific research company out of England earlier this year, where they polled 10,000 Americans, and that was the one where they said, oh, yeah, the 18 to 24-year-olds, was the, the, was, it was way outside the, the normal deviance of, uh, they said a third of them were didn't really believe in the globe anymore. And immediately, science groups are freaking out. They didn't know what to do. And then, like this one right here, this is Scientific American. They're coming back and they're saying, well, the data must be flawed. You're obviously, it's the experiment's obviously wrong. It's like, look, it's not us, right? This is you guys. This is your, one of your peers out there. You.gov, they do surveys for a living. That's all they do. They ask people questions. They collect the data. They produce the results. Unless you're accusing them of sensationalizing things, which science never, ever should do, then what are you saying? And anyway, so they're going into it. They were just, just dissecting the data. And the, the, the short version of this is, is they were saying, well, the data is wrong, so I wouldn't give it much credibility. There you go. There's your denial right there. Science is saying, well, it's, there's really, it can't be that many flat earthers. There can't be. And it's like, okay, that's the attitude you want. You were warned. How many, oh. how many times do we have to do it? I don't know if anybody heard that. Greer came in bringing a toy for me. Aww. Now Greer, the girl, and Flynn, the boy, are kind of going to get into a fake fight scuffle. So there could be some fur flying. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> um, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, a, a guy wrote me today from a radio station in Mississippi mm -hmm. after seeing the CBS story and said that he wanted to do an interview with me. And he sent me a picture of himself and his cat. <laughs> he did not. Yeah, I thought that was cute. Uh, it's uh, you didn't even have a real picture of your cat in the video. Yeah, no, of course. Um, KIX ninety two point seven radio in the Delta of Mississippi. He said he came across the CBS news segment and he wants to know if I would be on. He does an AM show, and I will show you without giving away his. I don't know if it's going to be possible. Um, I wanted to show the picture, but I don't want to give out his personal info at the same time because that would be not so cool. So let me do a little quick edit here. Wouldn't that be horrible if I put his like phone number out there and then he got stalked, his cat ran away, and he lost his job, and it was all because of me? Um, anyway. Yeah, um, the CBS uh, thing is... is is taking a while to there we go there he is can you oh. see yeah he was oh. saying uh, uh your cats uh are are like my cats and they're attracted to your keyboard because i have a ton of pictures all over you know? oh. that's a big cat compared to the guy look wait seriously that's a big cat that is a big cat yeah it is and you and i are going to be doing a, a radio interview pretty soon together right Thank um, you for reminding me. Uh, it is going to be beyond reality radio the first week of November. Right. And what are they going to do to us? <laughs> I don't think it'll be, I don't think it's going to be that much. Any time you deal with fringe radio, conspiracy radio. Well, yeah, radio, it's beyond reality radio. I mean, they're yeah. used to aliens, but see, they might not like the fact that we're going to put the, the kibosh on their whole aliens on hey. other planets fantasies. Maybe, and if they do, they can. Oh, they can try. Hey, we can tell them that there are possibly aliens, which would just be other life forms like ourselves, somewhere hidden across the plane. Exactly. Just because they're not from Venus or Mars or Jupiter doesn't. And mean it makes they're... way more sense, and it would yeah. scientifically very much more possible for them to get here. Yeah, right, and they still look strange, and they still abduct cows and people, and do that probing stuff. Mm -hmm. So. At least we yeah. hope so. <laughs> Ken, you, you need to hang out with higher class people. Mm, like Ned and Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, get, your, get your Sharpie out. <laughs> I am going to have Matt Long on Monday the 22nd at 6 p.m. Cool. Uh, yeah, 6 p.m. Central Time, which is 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Matt Long, speaker at the Canadian Conference. And Matt Long is of the channel Flat Worth. And um, he was at the recent Christian conference called Skyfall, I believe. Yeah. Matt Long, my guest, on Monday the 22nd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And Martin Kenny with the Cosmic Egg and mm. all his new research is going to be on Tuesday the 23rd at um, 6 p.m. Eastern. So that's cool. the interviews I've got coming up. 
So that will be cool. Right on. Um, I did get this really cool email from a guy named Mick, and I want to read what he wrote. And I'm not sure if he penned this himself or if he came across it, but it's called I'd Believe in a Globe If. Now, like I'm saying, this could be accredited to actually somebody else. He's not trying to pass it off as his. It could be his, but he sent it to me, and I'm going to read it to you right now. I would believe in a globe if there were real photographs. I would believe in a globe if someone measured the curve. I would believe in a globe if someone showed me how water can curve and stick to a ball when it's not what we observe. I would believe in a spinning globe if motion was detected and the constellations changed. I would believe in a globe if the stars didn't circle above us perfectly. I would believe in a globe and satellites if it wasn't 2,000 degrees Celsius where the ISS and satellites supposedly are. I would believe in a globe if not for sundials, astrolabes, and gyroscopes. I would believe in a globe if the Coriolis effect actually worked, but I've seen different results in the same hemisphere. I would believe in a globe if Antarctica could be openly explored without limits. I would believe in a globe if NASA had actually gone to the moon. I would believe in a globe if someone could prove how atmosphere just fades until it's a vacuum in space without losing any gases. I would believe in a globe if the sun and moon weren't the same size relative to us. And finally, I would believe in a globe if moonlight was not cooler than moon shade. It's very nice. Mick K. And whoever wrote it, if it wasn't Mick. Right. Thank you for that. What's going on in the chat? Wise Up is here, and uh, Amber Punk is here as well. And Carl Stenbeck, hey, haven't seen you for a while. Thanks for being here. Um, we are still waiting, by the way, for? for Shane Dawson's brother, Jared. All right. To come with the follow-up piece that he did the teaser on. Right. Where you and myself and D-I-T-R-H were together. And uh, we did some filming yeah, in Shane Dawson's that, studio in Hollywood. Did, yeah, we, we shot in Shane Dawson's studio. And then we... Which, without Shane Dawson there. Without Shane Dawson. Because he was... Busy. We ate a lot of Mexican he, food. We ate a lot of Mexican food. That's really all we ate was Mexican food. Yeah, that was basically it. <laughs> uh, and we did the meetup in Altadena. Yes, we certainly did. And he shot a whole bunch of footage. So including formal interviews with you, me, and uh, David Wise. And there's another thing. You and I did an interview and Shane Dawson's brother, Jared. I, I hate saying Shane Dawson's brother, Jared, but that's how people are going to know him. You don't even have to say Dawson. Just say Shane. Yeah, okay. He's, he's, he's yeah. the only Shane on YouTube. Yeah, this is probably true. Yeah. Um, we did an interview at a radio station. Remember, we drove out. Right. What happened to that? Do you remember what that was for? Uh, yeah, it's Extreme Health Radio. Extreme Health Radio. And what happened to him? I don't think he was put that. The was thing that out. released? I don't know. Maybe we have to check. Because we shot it. They shot it with. He shot it with video. Right. We were sitting in these chairs and it was lighting and we were mic'd and it was cool and it was you know, uh, that is commercial. that was and such a flat weird, earth. So that was such a weird second weekend. That was the second weekend down in Los Angeles where it's like, hey we you were, guys, wow, you're you're in LA. Hey, can you drive down and do an interview? Like, okay. Yeah, down in San Juan Capistrano. <laughs> okay. <sure. laughs> and with with Jared and his and we his ate more Mexican guy. food. And we ate more Mexican food. It's good i guess i got now i'm gonna have to look that up uh because yeah, i'm hungry <laughs> it wasn't just an audio thing and it was shot by extreme health and jared mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and yeah you're, you're right there's using some of that footage in extreme health radio and jared and his team have been invited to the conference and i have not heard anything from him yet that'd be cool so i, I nice do want to say hello to twin serpents who says martin kenny cosmic egg check it out i had mentioned earlier twin serpent that uh, martin's going to be my guest this coming Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time on this channel. So that'll be cool. Um, I've spoke with him before, but not on YouTube. So um, he's somebody that has very interesting ideas. And I, for one, am absolutely open to all sorts of different ideas about where we live, be it a dome, be it an egg, be it endless, be it whatever. I can't prove it at all to be one specific thing. I understand having emotional feelings that might draw you to b believe that there's a dome or not, or it makes scientific 
sense in some ways that there's a dome, hey, you know, that, that could very well be true. But I still think that we still need to come up with all sorts of different alternatives. And that's what Martin Kenny is doing and, and many others. So everyone needs to keep on doing it because the only way we're going to figure it out is if everybody is freely allowed without criticism and finger pointing and shill, shill sorts of stuff to, to go forth and, and, and prosper and, you know, research. Huh. Yeah, you and I will have to talk offline real quick after we're done with this. Uh oh, are we in trouble? No, <laughs> just joking. No, I'm. No, we have to talk about a couple of things. All right. Um, <laughs> hello to Knowledge Scavenger and Constance Bruns. Nice to have you both here, and Glenn Parent as well. I think, I think we're done. Are we done? I don't think we. I look. We covered the books. We, what I'm doing. What you're doing. Uh, what the big headlines. Whatever's going to come up next. I'm sure, it'll be great. Um, you and I probably are not going to run into each other until the conference, which is, hey, if you guys have not gotten tickets for the conference yet, please do. Mm. It's going to be an amazing time. It is at fe2018.com. It's going to be in Denver a month from right now. I'm going way early and staying way late. I'm there. Yeah, you are. Even later great. than me. I'm, yeah. I'm coming in on a Tuesday. I'm leaving on a Sunday, but you're coming in on a Monday and leaving on a Tuesday. Yeah. I, I just want to, I want to soak it all in. Yeah, hopefully the weather is fine. Yeah, well, that's the matter. only thing. And there's you know, oh there's well, a, it does matter if it's bad enough that planes are delayed and all of that. So. Well, in Denver, they generally don't delay planes unless mm. there's a tornado. The and that's rare. Although, hey, you know, twenty eighteen, well, like a major snowstorm or something. Cl climate change is a myth. <laughs> so, oh, hi to Truth Seeking, who says hi, Patricia and everyone. First time leaving a comment, but I've listened to many episodes at my third shift job, so I feel like I'm part of the family. You are part of the family. Nice. It's so, a big dysfunctional family, as flat earthers. Not just those who are in this chat, but all of us. Officially, the conference is on Thursday and Friday, but there are events on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And there's the billboard. There's the billboard event on Wednesday, which you will have to find. You know what? He's going to kill me if I don't mention it. Hang Who's on. He? The ITRH. The ITRH. Uh, he goes, make me. He goes, look, the billboard is going to be Wednesday, but we're not going to know everything until. Uh, after the F, go to the FE podcast for the last minute instructions. Interesting. Yeah. So and you great. know, on uh, Jaronism Raw lately, D I T R H is co hosting with Jaron. Yeah, I don't really. Monday like night. I don't, either of them. I'm just not fond. Of, <laughs> I just so. listened this past Monday. It was a good show. It was a good show. Yeah. They did, they did a, a great job there. I think yeah, they're, they're good. Good, good with each other. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if the conference is going to be great. Looking forward to seeing everybody. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm coming as early as I can because I'm going to be talking to a whole bunch of people about a lot of different things. Uh, there are, from what I understand, four documentary teams. Oh, my gosh. We got the Flatties, too. Everybody who was in this chat on a certain day. Oh, right. The Flatties. A, yeah. way, a way back, we, we came up with them. Um, with categories on one of the shows and then on another category, we came up with nominations and then right. Mark and I tallied it all up and came up with the, uh, came up with the winners and trophies are being created as we speak. Right. And, uh, we can't and it's on who Friday the winners night. are, but it's on Friday night. It's not on Thursday night. So people that thought initially it was on Thursday, the flatties were going to be on Thursday night, but that has now been moved to the very last event of the conference, which is on Friday night. And on Thursday night is going to be Rob Skiba versus Robert Sungenis in a cage match to the death. Right. <laughs> Otherwise known as a cordial debate on stage. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but we'll probably be quite tense. <laughs> oh, I don't think so because it's 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 late. It doesn't even start yeah, to like true. seven. So I mean, imagine that as like a last minute add on to the conference. You know, yeah, we'll just we'll just throw that in there. I mean, yeah, throw wow. that in there. That's no, what. I'm saying you know you know how much flat earthers like to you know have a good time. So after they hit happy hour, you know that. People, anytime I feel bad because Robert's going to bring up something. It's like, well, let me tell you why I believe in Apollo. People are going, boo. <laughs> People are going to be throwing heads of cabbage. And or stuff. highball glasses, most likely. <laughs> highball glasses, yeah. No, no. no Everyone, we will be I'm, very well behaved and we will be very respectful. I'm sure um, we'll be fine. Because we will be. Because but, but we great. owe it. We owe it to ourselves for our own personal reputations. Yeah. And also, we have to keep in mind the media will be there. And not that we're showing off for the media, but the media will pick up on the slightest thing that we might do that's totally normal 
and blow it totally out of proportion. Like if right. you wear an actual hat made out of tinfoil, well, guess what? Guess what'll happen? That'll be the number one thing shown everywhere. So don't do it. I'll go ahead and do it if you want, because I'm uh, wearing the hoodie. We're not gonna be able to stop it. Somebody's, yeah, bring your, bring yeah. your hood. <laughs> yeah, start chanting. Actually, the hood's not bad. It's, it's the chanting that will get you. <laughs> right. All right, well, thanks to everyone who's been here uh, during the show. Please give the video a thumbs up and share it. And there's links in the description box to Karen B and to some of the books that we showed and to the CBS video that we spoke of earlier. And I don't know what else to say other than Monday, uh, 6 p 7 p.m. Eastern, Flat Worth here on this channel. And then on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, it's Martin Kenny, the Cosmic Egg Guy. And uh, until I see you, Keep it flat. Hail Hydra. George Clooney. We're not on, are we? We kind of one of us. One of us. Ah, Ruby.